beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Pray and declare that our hearts are open tonight. Go ahead and tell the Lord, my heart is open. I am desperate for knowledge. Not embarrassed by my desperation. Teach me the principles of your kingdom. Empower me through wisdom. Let my today be greater than my yesterday as a result of the knowledge that you give me today. Let the last mistakes I made be the last one I will ever make. Give me wisdom, O oh God, that I will ride prosperously because of truth. Plant a hunger in me. Separate me through wisdom. Let my generation know that the Spirit of God is at work in my life. Pray from the depths of your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The day your desire for truth and knowledge ceases, I want you to know that that day you begin to die. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I have such passion i have an obsession it's beyond a passion to understand the principles of the kingdom i look back at my life and i look back at people that i know and i see how much satan prevailed over people and generations and so for me my pursuit for knowledge is not optional i don't do it i do it as a matter of life and death some of us came from very blessed families, very anointed families, where we had people to cover for our carelessness. But there are many of us that right now, we are the saviors of generations. And it is so important that we pay attention to knowledge. Hallelujah. Father, we desire your truth. Let the weight of your glory let the light of your river flow and let the truth of your kingdom let it rain in us let the way Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory. Let 
the way. Lord, our hearts are open. We came tonight to learn. We came to listen. Speak, thou spirit of the living God. You're the great rabbi. You're our master mentor. Teach us the principles of the kingdom. Grant us light that will beat darkness forever. Empower us, O God, to be true ambassadors. Tonight we submit our spirits to your word and to your anointing. Change us. Break every hardened heart, O God, and find expression. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We're going to pray just one prayer point and then you sit down. You're going to say, Lord, I need wisdom in my life. Give me wisdom. Go ahead and pray. Confess your inadequacy before him. I'm telling you, if you do not need the wisdom of the spirit, you can go home. You won't go to hell. Lord, I need your wisdom. That excellent wisdom that can make a man a wonder. Everywhere, inside and outside, pray. Lord, I understand that the difference between the level that I am now and the next level is the wisdom of God. Grant me wisdom. Grant me wisdom. Pray desperately from your heart. Grant me wisdom that I may live, O oh God. In this world of confusion, separate me through wisdom. Build my life through wisdom. Let me not make the mistakes of my parents. May I not make the mistakes of those who have gone ahead of me. Deliver me through wisdom. Separate me through wisdom. Distinguish me through wisdom. I long for your wisdom. I covet your wisdom. Make me a champion through wisdom. Let wisdom make me an ambassador. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom. Wisdom. Not oratory. Not intelligence wisdom is the principal thing please listen to me wisdom is the principal thing he said therefore get it whatever price you need to pay he said pay it and get it and he said with all your getting get understanding exalt her and she will promote you she will bring an ornament upon your head. A crown of glory will she give you when you embrace her. He said, does not wisdom cry. Does not wisdom cry in the street. Looking for as many who are tired of the way their lives are. Wisdom stands as a woman crying. And say, oh ye that are simple in heart, will you not come to me? Bible says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. And if you do this, there will be life to those who find it. And health to their flesh. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me. With me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches. It says, I honor them that love me. Doth not wisdom cry. Tonight, wisdom is crying again. Wisdom is asking you, do you want your life to be the way it has always been? Wisdom is crying. 
he said i was there when the earth was founded this is in the book of proverbs i was there i i have a track record of the weakness of mankind and if you trust me i will deliver you for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom i choose the way Oh, I found my way out of the wickedness of this life. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way. Hallelujah. Listen. When you buy a product, there is something that is written on the product when you pick water or anything. They write something best before. Have you seen that? Best before means if you want to maximize the opportunity and the blessing that this product has, use it. Take advantage of this time period. Hallelujah. That means any moment after the given time period, it will either not work to your satisfaction or you will pay a greater price. Hallelujah. Pat Robertson, many of you know him, the founder of CBN. In the days of his youth, he prayed three prayer points. He said, oh God, I'm but a young man and you have given me such a great assignment. I pray that you give me three things. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the spirit. He said, if you can give me these three things, send me. We neglect wisdom so much. We neglect wisdom so much. And then we run around chasing for the things that only wisdom can give. We waste our time in things that are minors. Things that will come to us naturally if we invest in wisdom. One more time, pray and say, Lord, I choose wisdom. I use my mouth and I use my life. I am tired of foolish decisions. I am tired of the level that I am. And from the depths of my heart, I covet the wisdom of the Spirit not human wisdom not intellectual wisdom that comes to naught i crave i cry i express desperation for that wisdom that made kings out of ordinary men that wisdom that made champions out of shepherds that wisdom that made warriors out of weak women I covet your wisdom. I covet your wisdom. It is life to me. I covet your wisdom. I express it as a matter of life and death. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. Not by strength. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth, and honor. They that seek me early find me. Hallelujah. Lord, as a family of faith, we submit our desperation before you. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. Distinguish us through wisdom, oh God. We need wisdom. We crave for it. Thank you for the things that you have done in us and through us at this level. But oh God, we cry for wisdom. In the name of the Lord Jesus, grant us wisdom tonight. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Please greet one another. Hallelujah. Again, we'll never cease to honor and appreciate great men and women of God in this place. Please let's celebrate Prof. Thank you, sir, for taking out the time.
celebrate Pastor Williams in a long time. Hallelujah. Please celebrate Shadi's husband, Mr. Ojele, his wonderful wife. Thank you, sir. And Pastor Pete Rock's wife is here, my friend and brother. Celebrate him and celebrate her. You will be somebody's wife, ladies. Celebrate her. Thank you. Hallelujah. Everybody say wisdom is the principal thing. Say it one more time. Say it one more time. That means when you get wisdom, it will make you a principality. Oh, I love the wisdom of God. See, brothers and sisters, please listen to me. Look up. Look up. If you pay the price, you see, wisdom is so powerful. You don't need to give somebody to keep it for you and then you collect it. It's not subject to the wickedness of another person. You don't need to refrigerate it. You don't need to warm it. Huh? You don't need to save it in a bank. It has equal value in every nation. Hallelujah. You don't need to keep it in a safe and then be afraid if a thief will come and pick it. When you have it, you have gotten it. It's as simple as that. There are things, see, the apostle said, such as I have. A man can know that he has something. It's not guesswork. You can know that you have something. Hallelujah. And I have come to cherish the wisdom of God. Wisdom of God will make you do things that will cause men to wonder. They said, what wisdom is this? May that be someone's testimony. That a generation will look at you and say, what wisdom is this? I cannot believe that with the kind of background you had. Or with the kind of past you had. You are still surpassing standards. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Tonight, please, even if you've never paid attention in anything that I've been teaching, this is one of the nights where I believe God will alter someone's destiny radically. Hallelujah. Radically. What you do not know can destroy you. Are you listening to me? What you do not know, brothers and sisters, in this realm, ignorance is not an excuse. What you do not know can destroy you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you. Help us. Oh, come, oh, come, man. And ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to thee, O Israel. We rejoice. We rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us, O oh, Israel. Lord, you are in the midst of your people, and we salute your excellency. You have come to make us like you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
We're taking on the subject of extraordinary success tonight. The Lord put this so strong in my heart. I'm so excited because this is one of those days that you will walk out of this place rejoicing, knowing that your life has become predictable. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm like a bee. My life is a product of many, many anointings. I have gleaned from the wisdom of many men. My father called me some years ago and he said, you're a young man with gray hair. Wisdom can add to your status in life. Wisdom can make a boy called Joash at age 8 to become the king of an entire nation. Wisdom can make a feeble person called David to defeat a roaring enemy called Goliath. I cherish the wisdom of God. I cherish the wisdom of the Spirit. Sometimes when I sit down, I just begin to weep and I salute the Spirit of God for the ministry of all the men and the women of God who have poured in and invested in my life. Some of them may never know the impact that they have made in my life. But I am so grateful. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit in your work on earth is done. The Holy Spirit has moved through great and mighty men and women and has opened them to different dimensions of grace in the kingdom. And we remain indebted hallelujah this teaching tonight is very dear to my heart and I hope that we will receive it and may it change us in the name of Jesus the first thing I want to talk about tonight is just to challenge us on our responsibilities as far as success is concerned the topic is extraordinary success as far as being successful in life is concerned, please listen to me. You have a role to play. Everyone say, I have a role to play. When it comes to the success equation, I want you to know that God has a part to play. But you also have a part to play. Please get this. It is not all up to God. And it is not all up to you. We have two extremes in the body of Christ when it comes to the issue of success. There are others who believe success is purely based on intellectualism and hard work and all of that. And they neglect the place of God to their detriment. And they find out that they never become successful. And then there are others, especially those who are spiritual and they love God. And they believe that because they are spiritual and they love God and they experience his presence, success should just occur automatically. Both people are in error. There is an imbalance. Are you getting my point? When it comes to the kingdom, you have a role to play and God has a role to play. It is your playing of your role and God playing his role 
that makes your success extraordinary that makes your success guaranteed praise the lord it's important for you to know this i always say this when i'm teaching on success that it is dangerous and oftentimes destructive to try to share truth with people when they do not see the need to receive it are you getting my point it is very dangerous listen let me tell you something when god started out with me i was so excited at the depths of truth and insight that god was giving me and i made a big mistake and i don't want you to make that mistake and the mistake that i made was that i assumed everybody had my kind of passion are you getting my point so every revelation god shared with me i was just looking for just every and anybody to share it with and i saw the way that certain revelations came to me as precious pearls and i carried it and gave people and they dropped it on the floor and matched it they trivialized the depth of the dealings with the spirit never waste your time trying to give information to people who have not seen the need to receive it please get this god is giving us wisdom tonight hallelujah that's why the bible says they that seek me will find me you must communicate your desire and your desperation for god it says you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart is a law in the spirit never waste your time trying to invest your time your energy your resources in people who have not communicated a desire to receive it and don't feel guilty about it there are many parents who spend money trying to pay the school fees of people who are just not interested have you seen people like that you pay money for lesson and you come and find the person just gisting around or playing computer games do not waste your time and your resources on people make sure you probe the sincerity of their willingness to receive is someone learning something this night i used to feel so guilty because i felt if god gives you something you should lavishly give it and you know i became an enemy to many people because i was forcing them to try to get these principles and i just found out that some people are just not interested are you getting my point so learn it tonight treasure the informations that you receive from the spirit treasure your sacrifices don't trivialize your sacrifices you may pick up this message right now as a gift and give someone and the person tells you please i'm busy i'm expecting a call somewhere he's expecting a call that will lead him to make a foolish decision whereas there is wisdom that will save him are, are you getting what i'm saying you're my treasure my priority who can compare to you great is the measure of your royalty oh morning star you truly are everything very important you have a role to play and god has a part to play that's what many of our fathers of faith call covenant. I like to use the word partnership for it. That it takes you. Please never forget this. Never forget this. Your success is not all up to God and it's not all up to you. You have a part to play and God has a part to play. And as far as God is concerned, he is more than faithful. You can trust him to play his part. That means the, the, the problem in the equation of success is not trying to coerce God to play his own part. It's to make sure that we understand what our roles and responsibilities are. Are you getting my point? I promised that I was going to touch on something two weeks ago. Let me just touch on it very briefly. 
the gospel of salvation and the gospel of the kingdom there is a difference they are both gospels but i need you to understand something the gospel of salvation is the gospel that reveals to you the sacrifice of jesus christ on the cross hallelujah it lets you know that christ came and he paid with his blood as an atonement for your sins and that if by faith you accept the free gift the sacrifice of the lord jesus christ the shedding of his blood his death and his resurrection that if by faith you open up your heart at once eternal life becomes yours as a gift are you getting my point now so under the gospel of salvation you do not do anything any man that tries to tell you that you do things in order to inherit salvation or to receive eternal life that's not true the bible says we are saved by grace and that not of works hallelujah lest any man should boast but then the problem is many people camp around the gospel of salvation the gospel of salvation is only an entrance it should open you up to other realities in the kingdom are you getting my point now and then you come into the revelation of the gospel of the kingdom the gospel of the kingdom reveals jesus as king not savior again and it reveals you not just as a child but as an ambassador it is the gospel of the kingdom that opens you up not just to your rights and privileges but to your responsibilities hallelujah the gospel of the kingdom helps you to understand that god did not just save you to sit down moving around and every time there's trouble you just say jesus you died for me i belong to you if you like don't save me and then we don't do anything so we throw all of the responsibility to jesus christ and we just say just sit down and enjoy yourself and let life work for you unfortunately that's not true it sounds so true brothers and sisters it sounds so spiritual but it's not the truth it's not an accurate interpretation of the thoughts of god there is the gospel of the kingdom and in the gospel of the kingdom god finds a man god empowers that man and god begins to reveal to that man that he god has a need that we were saved unto good works we were not saved by works but we were saved unto good works not unto laziness so you understand that there is a responsibility in the kingdom hallelujah it's very important for us to understand this when it comes to success it depends on you hallelujah so let's look at the concept of success very quickly um by the way let me celebrate two people um you have the photos media hallelujah i must appreciate these two great men of god they have shaped and molded my life i salute and i honor them in their absence or in their presence i'm not embarrassed they have mentored and built me they have imparted wisdom i cried for wisdom they are true apostles of wisdom lots of people make noise but see wisdom has fruits are you getting my point anyone can claim to be wise but there are fruits of wisdom and i honor these great servants of god the first of them is bishop david oyedeko i honor him in my life i salute him as an apostle of wisdom <laughs> hallelujah I honor him and I appreciate God for the depth of wisdom and the depth of insight different people say all kinds of nonsense wherever I sit down and I hear you say anything wrong against him I will get up and walk out of there I don't care who you are and what you are saying I don't care what your thoughts are and what your perspectives are I salute these great men of God. Koinonia, help me. Let's celebrate grace. 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 
Hallelujah. I also celebrate a true apostle of wisdom, Dr. Mike Mudok. Oh, what a mentor. What a mentor. What a mentor. I honor him in his absence. I honor him in his presence. I honor his grace. I honor him with my life. I honor the investment of the spirit upon his life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please sit down. God bless you. Let's get into the teaching very quickly. There is what you must know to take you from where you are now to where God wants you to be. Hallelujah. Number one, let's examine the concept of success. What does it mean to be successful? I'll have to run. There is a lot to talk about tonight. What does it mean to be successful? Success means obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. Please write it. Very important. This is a school tonight. Success is obtaining or achieving or accomplishing a worthwhile goal. If you don't have anything to write, use the notepad on your phone. Please write something. Write something. This is a school. Hallelujah. Place value on knowledge. Place value on information. In heaven, when the apostle was in heaven, he said, write, write. Don't just hear, write. Because there is only so much your mind can take. Hallelujah. So what is success? Obtaining or accomplishing or achieving a worthwhile goal. One of the things that I've seen in my life and I've seen across different territories, especially in the continent of Africa and even in Nigeria, is that there are many sincere, please listen, many well-meaning Christians who may remain failures for the rest of their lives. Please listen. We are going to examine something very powerful tonight. Why is it that many Christians are failures? So many believers, so many tongue-talking Christians, prayer warriors, sincere Christians that have character, men who love God, very, very sincere people, honest, well-meaning believers, but they never get to accomplish or achieve anything. They never get to transform a generation. They never get to rise beyond the limitations that they found themselves in. Why is this so? Hallelujah. And I got to understand something very important and very powerful. Jeremiah 9 verse 24. I was asking the Lord this question and then one day the Lord showed me a scripture that blew my mind and then i heard one of these men of god sharing this thing again again and again the first person i had talking about this was dr mike mudok and then i had olumide emmanuel again talking about it please look up jeremiah 9 verse 24 but let him that glory had glory in this that he what understand it and know it me hold on why will the bible use i hope you understand that the 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 construction of scripture is very 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 detailed and very intentional he said let him glory that he knows me and then that he understands me not just that he knows me alone not just that he understands me and i said ah that's the point there is a difference between knowing God and understanding God. Are you getting my point now? The knowledge of God is what we call in koinonia intimacy. You understand, you, you know his presence, you can sense his presence. You are seeing transformations happening in your life. The anointing of the spirit of God is being felt strong upon your life. That's as a result of the knowledge of God. But when it comes to 
your success in life you must understand the ways of god the bible says he showed his acts to the nation of israel but unto moses he showed his ways his principles the inner workings that produce those results that are seen so it's not enough to know god you must understand the principles of the kingdom and one of my obsessions is to open the body of Christ to understand the principles of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mike Modoc puts it this way. He says there are two dimensions to the knowledge of God. There is the person of Jesus Christ and there are the principles of Jesus Christ. The person of Jesus Christ secures you for eternity. The person of Jesus Christ secures your peace. But the principles of Jesus Christ secure your success here and now. Are you getting the difference now? Very, very profound and very important. The principles of Jesus. So, all of the people who we consider to be successful and are not believers have embraced the principles of Jesus, but they rejected his person. They will never accept that these truths that they are working with that is producing this success has come from God. They will never give him the glory. They will never acknowledge him as the Lord of their life. But they, they change the names of these principles. But you know that these are kingdom principles at work. But then we have on the other hand the church. We love God. We know everything about God. We know all the names of God from Genesis to Revelation. But we have rejected the principles of Jesus. So we have pastors, we have leaders, we have all kinds of people who never get to make any kingdom impact in their lifetime. But tonight God is separating us through wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. There are laws and principles that must be understood and obeyed in order to be successful in this kingdom please write it down there are laws and principles that must first be understood and then obey in order for you to achieve true success has nothing to do with age has nothing to do with gender hallelujah it's not about age it's not about your advantage or your disadvantage. Jesus was born in Nazareth. And apparently the Nazarenes had a testimony that they were failures. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? But the best gift came out of Nazareth. Are you following me now? So when it comes to success, please and please deliver yourself from this luck mentality. A lot of people just believe we have been taught by well-meaning pastors, well-meaning preachers that whoever God wants to bless, he will bless. Whoever God does not want to bless, have you heard that? Please be delivered this night in the name of Jesus Christ. It's impossible. Listen, when you understand the laws of the kingdom, you will know why God is love and you will know why God is just righteousness and justice the bible says are the foundations of his throne joshua chapter 1 verse 8 the ultimate equation for kingdom success many of us read it we just recite it but there is a powerful revelation joshua chapter 1 verse 8 there are laws there are principles that must be understood and must be obeyed in order to be successful listen let me tell you something please look up there are many people who hear what i'm saying right now and just make up their mind and say no forget it it's just nonsense we have seen people who don't know anything and god just bless them have you heard preachers like that i wasn't doing anything i was just sitting down and a blessing what is your concept of a blessing We are talking about success. I mean sustained success that can be imparted to generations. And I'm not talking of money or finance necessarily. Hallelujah. Doing big things for the kingdom. Accomplishing much for his majesty. Joshua 1 verse 8. This book that contains laws. 
the laws of the kingdom many times when we hear law we are just thinking law of old testament no 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 the laws of the kingdom were there before genesis 1 are you getting my point the laws of the kingdom are not the laws of the old testament no they have been there from the foundations of the earth they are the very principles that heaven is governed by shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that means do it consistently that thou mayest observe to what it's not enough to confess it's not enough to meditate there is a doing according to how many all not 90 percent the equation of success is so strict that 90 percent is still f for then after you have done this not during not before please help me read that last that that last uh, the, the the last clause there for then are you ready one to read for then thou shall make and thou shall have who will make his way he said you will make your way prosperous that means it is your responsibility if you want to remain at the level you are now are you getting my point now we keep blaming God on things that God has no business one of the things that I have learned in my life is the ability to accept responsibility it's so easy to blame our parents for the way we are right now right many young people we stand and have the gods and the effrontery to insult them and we say our parents they were careless they were this but look at how old you are now you've even forgotten that you are now 35 years doing the exact same thing you were complaining right from when you were 18 and you are still making you are making worse decisions because you are exposed to more opportunities and information many of us like to talk about the government you know people say the money in nigeria how can one person loot 170 million they would have shared it to all of us can i tell you something look up share the money in nigeria equally to everybody i give you 24 hours it will return back to the people that had it initially guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed for then shall thou make your ways what prosperous and you will have good success may god give us good success there is a difference between good success and bad success good success is the kind of success that exalts the name of christ keeps you in integrity and you can when you kill a man to be rich that's bad success are you getting what i'm saying when you sleep around for money that's bad success when you give bribes and tips in your office for promotion that's bad success the success of many people in nigeria has a cost upon it because it is bad success hallelujah let's continue very very important i want us to examine certain things very very quickly um let's look at jeremiah 6 verse 16 one other thing i want you to realize about success is that success is not coincidence success is not magic success is not luck there's no such thing as that a man said if you wake up and find yourself successful be sure you were not sleeping thus saith the lord stand in the ways and see and do what ask everybody say ask everybody say inquire everybody say pursue ask for the what that means those parts are already there you don't need to invent it you don't need to discover a road i mean to try to invent a road that has been found he said ask for the ancient path where is the good way it's only the good way that can give you good success is that true and he said and walk therein 
you can ask and they can show you and you can sit down and still be looking he said when you find it walk daring what's the result he said you shall find rest for your souls but what is the church saying but they said we will not walk is that not the testimony of many people we will not walk one day god will bless us god is seeing me praying you wait and see and we keep waiting and waiting and waiting hallelujah i come from a lineage of missionaries my grandfather they were the founding fathers and the trustees of the church of christ in nigeria you go to the history and you are checking you will see my mother when they were all small sitting there in the picture and my father too that my, my grandfather hallelujah my blood father was a baptist served god diligently with his life brothers and sisters if if there is any couple that i've seen in my life who are men of character and integrity that truly love god i can tell you my parents it, but it did not change the situation in my family are you getting what i'm saying I knew times when my mother would lock the door, you would hear her shouting and crying and praying. And at a point I said, Kai God, but you self now. Wow. Ah, somebody is crying like this to you. What you do not know can destroy you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I'm going to share with us a few principles. Before I go there, let me just say something quickly. The difference between failure and success is the voice that you have chosen to trust. I must say this before we continue. The difference between your success in life or your failure is the voice that you have chosen to trust. It's not enough to just listen. The Bible said, be careful how you hear. You can hear a wrong voice and believe that voice for years to your detriment. The difference I can never help you to become successful until I change the wrong voice you are listening to Adam and Eve kept hearing the voice of God and as long as they had the voice of God and walked in his ways they were successful the day they had what another voice is that true Lucifer came with another voice and he misled them and the Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, it said, And they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? Hallelujah. And Adam, uh, that's three of, chapter 3 or 4. And he says, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. What did God say? Who told you? That means you started hearing another voice. Your success in life, listen please is highly dependent on the voice you have chosen to trust not just here our decisions in life are based on the convictions that words have brought for us if i convince you right now that if you come and kneel down on this altar you will get breakthrough will you be embarrassed doing it you will just come and kneel down is that not true if i convince you right now that if you slap lawrence your breakthrough will come guaranteed. As stupid as it sounds, you will find out that there are people who will come. Passionately, they say, oh, Lawrence, it's not like I'm a wicked person, but I need to. The whole body of Christ is moving at the frequency of convictions and words. And the Bible says, there is, as it were, many voices, and none of these voices are without effect that means the voice you permit to speak to you is the voice that molds your success unfortunately many of us in the body of christ have received not necessarily wrong voices but inaccurate voices not necessarily wrong but that the equations they have given us were not complete so we grew up with convictions that are not thorough not potent enough to deliver unto us the things that are required that's why god is helping someone tonight 
I can never change your life until you are willing to change the voice, the convictions that you have trusted and kept. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm going to teach on three basic principles. Number one, very important. I'm not going to talk too deep in it. Number one, if you want to be successful, please listen. We're going to talk about the principle of mentorship. Listen. This has become such a controversial issue. I have a series just for this. And I trust that when God grants grace, we are going to deal with it. It's, it's been such a controversial issue in the body of Christ. There have been all kinds of imbalances about the concept of mentorship. Many people in their innocence have been misled into all kinds of junks, have been threatened by all kinds of wrong ideologies. But let me tell you a few things about mentorship. Very important. First Samuel 3 verse 12 to 13. Please help us media. We need to be very fast. Mentorship is a very important aspect of our lives. There are two ways to learn in life. Number one, mistakes. Number two, mentors. There are two ways to learn in life. You learn through your mistakes or you learn through your mentors. Hallelujah. Mentorship is very, very important. Please pay attention to what I'm sharing tonight if you ever are interested in success in the kingdom. 3 verse 12 and 13. 3 verse 12 and 13. 1 Samuel 3 verse 12 and 13. Thank you Holy Spirit. Is somebody getting blessed tonight? Hallelujah. Alright, let's read together. One to read. And in that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Verse 13. Why? He said, for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knows because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not and he restrained them not there are two ways to learn in life mistakes and the ministry of mentors is so so important second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 very powerful scripture please if you listen to what i'm sharing just three laws that I share tonight, it will dramatically change your life. Second Timothy 2 verse 2. Everyone please read. One to read. Of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to what? Teach others also. So what I had, I commit to faithful men. And those faithful men teach and commit others. This is how the chain of success works in the kingdom. A mentor is not just one you submit to and admire. That's what a lot of people do in the body of Christ and they call mentorship. So wrong. A mentor is not just one that you submit to. It's not just one that you admire. A mentor is not just a man who instructs you a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you obey not whose instructions you hear not whose instructions you discuss not whose instructions you pray about. Are you seeing the nonsense that are done in the body of Christ? All in the name of mentorship. And many people never get blessed. You do not see the signature of what they attempt to be represented. Hallelujah. A mentor is not just a person you submit to. It's not just a person you admire. Oh, I admire this person. And that means the person is your mentor. Impossible. A mentor is not even the person you sit under. It's not just the person you hear. A mentor is one whose voice you have come to trust as the voice of God in your life. 
this is very very dangerous if you understand it you won't just get into all this flamboyancy that people do in the name of mentorship and confuse themselves into perdition a mentor is a man whose voice you trust and whose instructions you follow and obey a mentor is not one whose instructions you discuss please get this get this get this this is a powerful um, principle about mentorship a mentor is not one who talks to you and you say okay i've had you let me go and pray about it you've had people say all those kinds of junk they say i need to go and pray and confirm you do not trust his voice there is no man in scripture who truly listened to the instruction of a mentor and missed it it's impossible from genesis to revelation you read it is someone getting blessed tonight very important let me share with you a few principles about mentorship that will bless us oh thank you jesus someone is getting blessed in this place in the name of jesus christ a mentor is a shortcut to your future mentorship is shortcut to your future experience is the slowest way to learn experience is the slowest way to learn in life if you think everything you are going to get in life there are all kinds of arrogant people who will never listen to any man you don't have any man's books you are reading there are no tips i hear the holy spirit for myself experience is the slowest way to achieve it's like going to lagos by trekking you will arrive but you may arrive dead hallelujah a mentor is your coach he tells you what you are doing right and he tells you what you are doing wrong a mentor is not your friend a mentor is not your confidant you see where a lot of people miss it please you neglect this principle i'm sharing just know that you have signed an agreement with failure guaranteed a mentor is not your best friend your best friend loves you the way you are hallelujah but a mentor loves you too much to leave you the way you are this is the difference between a mentor and your best friend your best friend loves you you will make all kinds of blunders and your best friend will say it's all right all things work together for them that love god who are the called because we want your your friend wants to have that relationship and that rapport so they will forbear a lot of things they will overlook a lot of things so your friend you can be in a room with your friend and be breaking a lot of laws and your friend can forbear the day you leave your friend and go to another place that's where you see the gravity of your blunders because your friend has is somebody understanding what i'm saying there are many of you that you think you are doing very well because around you are people who can tolerate you to death but mentorship reveals your weakness and provokes you to change a mentor has nothing nothing absolutely nothing to lose by your stubbornness or your lack of listening hallelujah it's not this kind of thing that okay i like this lady and she does something wrong and i want to correct her. i say ah let me correct this lady now and let this thing backfire and say okay no problem god you are that's not mentorship brothers and sisters that's called friendship are you getting my point a man who can look at you and rebuke you and correct you a man who your success does not come as a big deal to him are you getting my point now help us holy spirit is someone getting blessed listen let me tell you something wisdom does not necessarily come with age you must understand this a mentor is somebody who can correct you i want to say something that will bless you right now correction from your pastor or your leader or your mentor or if you are working your superior is god's protection to you from your next tragedy are you getting my point 
when when your leader or your boss or your superior corrects you it is god using them to save you from the next blunder and tragedy you are about to make he said my son pay attention don't just hear there is a difference between hearing and listening hearing is just sound listening is hearing with the intention of obedience that's the difference between listening and hearing there are many people who hear all kinds of things i have been more blessed from the men of god and geos of many ministries than even the workers in those ministries they are there walking they keep hearing but they never listen is god challenging someone tonight Jesus mentorship is impartation mentorship is impartation a man imparts his grace his wisdom mentorship is learning through the pain of another person you are learning through someone else's pain he already made blunders that you are about to make and he can save you decades of failure and recovery if only you will listen please make sure you are writing in one hour brothers and sisters look at me in one hour i can read somebody's book and gain an experience that took him 30 years of pain and mistakes again and again are you getting my point in one hour i can for paying 500 naira pastor i can receive someone's book and sit down and gain wisdom that took someone 30 years when i read rediscovering the kingdom years ago the book just came out i made sure that i ordered it i wrote a letter to mike Mo uh, miles munro and i told him i've been blessed by your ministry may god bless and honor you and he replied me he said may god bless you use the book i got that book i paid so much when it came into the country, I made sure I was one of the first people that got it. And I sat down and he said it took him 30 years of the dealings of the spirit. But within one day, you can get wisdom from the pain of a man. Is somebody getting blessed? Do you want to have to be the one to pay every price by yourself? Your lifetime is not enough to correct yourself until you make it right. Is someone getting blessed in this place? Thank you, Jesus Christ. A mentor is one who knows already what you need to know. A mentor is one that already knows what you need to know. Not one that is struggling to know what you need to know. The Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained, not are obtaining. A mentor is one who knows what you need to know. Whose mentorship do you treasure and value? That's what God is asking you. Whose voice have you been listening to to shape your life? I can tell you that this is the reason why you are where you are right now. Whose voice do you treasure and value? Very, very important. Mentorship is so, so important. As far as the kingdom is concerned very very important listen i want to teach you how to be blessed from a mentor's life there is an attitude hallelujah this is where a lot of people are missing it please listen i wrote it down here and let me just read it i said to be blessed from a mentor's life you must receive the person of that man of god not just the message the person I see a lot of people who say forget about the person just receive the message and leave him that's junk and nonsense are you getting my point you must first receive the person of that man of God 
I know a lot of people who talk wrong things against men of God and great leaders. They sit down in conversations that tear them into pieces. And then they sit down and want to attempt to get the treasure in them. It never works that way. You cannot sit down and tear a man into pieces and believe that you will receive from that man. The law does not work that way. The first requirement is that you must receive the person. You must be able to trust the voice of God. Mentors are not perfect people. They are people who have knowledge. They are people who have experience. They are people who have grace. If you are not, if you, if you do not have the capacity to overlook a man's limitations, I'll never forget one time, I went somewhere and some people were discussing about Benny Hinn shortly when the divorce happened. Is someone getting blessed tonight? They were talking about Benny Hinn and I had the people just shouting and they were saying, I'm disappointed in Benny Hinn. Imagine, how can a great man, and I just kept quiet, I was listening to them. We were watching a program and they were just talking, tearing this man down, saying, this generation self now what is happening you don't even trust anybody again and i listened to them and later on i called the person i said how could you be this unwise hallelujah over an information you do not even understand you are not Benny Hinn's pa you don't know anything it's easy to sit down and discuss about people isn't it it's easy to sit down and watch people play football since there's world cup let me use that example and say ah nigeria you did score shame on you that heading if you just had it is easy talk is cheap until you get to that place you will see how easy or how difficult it is it's easy to see a pastor leading his church and sit down and say kai i don't like this these guys are so boring this blah 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 this pastor's wife is not even very very anointed why is she quoting this and that until the day you have the opportunity you will pray and preach every sermon you can preach in one month and that's when you will know that pastoring is not child's play you will fish you will copy the teaching of every man of god till your congregation can even tell you the message and you will find out that it's just it's just february then you will begin to respect every preacher that preaches every week that you stand on your stage and say ah but is that scripture correct it's easy to stand and judge the host has said never criticize a man until you have done two times what the man has done once and i listened to them and i called the person i said no don't do this if you talk like this you will never receive the grace upon his life and i told him you need to go to god and say lord i am sorry hallelujah you must receive the person of that man of God. Number two, you must trust his voice. You must trust that his voice represents the voice of God in your life. Please listen to this. I'm not teaching you error. Nobody obeyed instructions from a man of God in scripture and went to perdition. If he's a true man of God. You must be willing to submit to his instructions as coming from God. Listen, you never get a mentor give you instructions and you say, I've had you, sir. Let me go and think about it. That's nonsense. Read your scriptures. If you trust that the voice of this man of God is the voice of God, you prove it by absolute loyalty. This looks very childish, but I will show you why so many people do not receive i remember one time when abuja and this particular great man of god we just sat down listening to him and when when i saw that man i kept quiet for hours this man was talking some of my colleagues were just making noise and i kept quiet i was listening to this man and he was looking at me eyeball to eyeball and at a point he said what kind of person are you don't you talk and i kept quiet I was just listening listening and later on he cornered me outside and he said i know what i've seen in the spirit about you pray for me i said i'll pray in my room not here he said lay hands on me i said no i won't do that 
many foolish young preachers say yes sir you are celebrating my meal. kneel down let me show you what anointing can do see that no this is why many people do not let me tell you success is not about business or job if you do it it accounts for less than 10 percent of the equation of success if you neglect these laws you neglect it to your detriment praise the lord is someone listening it is only when you have accepted the voice and the person of this man then his message his grace and his anointing will be effective in your life it's amazing how people come and sit down in a meeting listen to their men of god and immediately they come out they sit down in forums and try to discuss and tear everything into pieces and just sit down and say man oh boy that thing this man is saying this is nonsense i remember one man who was criticizing mike mudok and he was even warning me he said be careful this seed seed man everything is seed every what sort of man is that you will stand and say they should sow a seed into his life i said that's all you saw about this man that's everything you saw about this man I said time will tell years later i saw him in the midst of financial crisis he was reading one of my Mudok's book why people do not receive their financial harvest see let me tell you something about life <laughs> life can humble any level of arrogance it's only a matter of time there are realities that is like a wall you will box it till you get tired at that point hallelujah bible says that david cried and cried until he had no strength he came to himself thank you jesus christ mentorship creates seven things and let me just put it like i said we have a series and we'll talk on it more extensively mentorship creates seven things in your life when you embrace that ministry number one it creates impartation number two it creates guidance number three it creates access it creates impartation it creates guidance it creates access number four it creates endorsement number five it creates promotion or a platform for promotion Number six, mentorship creates a platform for wisdom. Seven, mentorship creates speed in your life. Take note of this. It was through the wisdom of a dear woman of God that I respect who called me one day. I used to talk about men of God and I would mention their names. And with my zeal, I would just be talking and the woman called me one day and said, my son, you are a young man and you have a very long journey to go god is going to use you greatly never criticize a man of god you are too young to know everything around a man of god's life make sure from today and i said mommy god is my witness and in your presence this is the last time i will ever open my mouth and talk about a man of god mentioning his name i would challenge wrong doctrines but not to talk about a man of god wisdom i would have destroyed an opportunity in the height of what god will be doing in koinonia one day now i will make a foolish decision maybe on air are you seeing that now this is how great people i'm showing you the wisdom and the blessings of mentorship there are many of you who have seen people and you disregard them because you think a mentor is only one who has your kind and level of anointing there are wisdoms that are greater than the realm of anointing levels of wisdom hallelujah i learned silence from one of our boards of trustees i notice every time you are talking to that man he will keep quiet you will talk and say all kinds of things and you will keep quiet. I didn't used to be like that. Especially if God has revealed to me what, what your problem is. Before you talk, I say, please save, save us the time. And he taught me the art of listening. That it is wisdom to listen to a man. See that?
Thank you, Jesus Christ. You don't decide or choose your mentor. Let me shock you now. <laughs> mm. Mentorship, just like your assignment, is discovered. You discover them and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons in your life. We have a series on that and I will teach you. You don't sit down and choose your mentor because you will never choose a man who will flog you. Are you getting my point? You are smart enough. Mentorship is like your assignment. Why will I choose a man who, when people are celebrating me and saying, Apostle Joshua Selman, you look at me and say, young man, no problem, but there is more work to be done. Keep that, all of those accolades and let's work. Do you think I naturally will like that kind of person? Mentorship is like assignment. You don't choose. That's why a lot of people choose somebody and he rebukes them. He said, oh boy, I am seeing that you like women. Say, ah, what sort of embarrassment is this? And he moves from the name you used to call him, maybe man of God or daddy or papa. He says, sir, please. Ah, I don't like women. What kind of thing is this? I am a prophet or I am an apostle. You are an apostle, I am an apostle. <laughs> hallelujah how can you tell me i like women me and you don't even see me around he says i'm telling you you like women go and work on it say no i don't like this guy let me go to this other one he said you are okay just believe push yourself and then the day something backfires truly you find yourself sleeping around you will now get up and say goodness and this man saw it i told one of my friends something years ago immediately i looked at him I said you have a lot of tendencies and i want you to work at it at that point he even got offended that day but after like four or five years he called me one day he said can you remember something that you told me he said honestly i am embarrassed to even believe that i'm a victim of this i told him no there's no point for embarrassment once you acknowledge something change look let me tell you let me tell you mentorship is so powerful somebody can sit down and look at you while you are bubbling with all your zeal he can see all the tendencies oh i'm a millionaire let money come oh kingdom you will see what will happen and the person says make sure you take out time to start praying because i see money destroying you this is not word of knowledge this is this is the excellency of pain and wisdom and experience it's amazing how people come for counseling pastor they come on monday for counseling and they are now coming to seek my advice and they just come they sit down good afternoon sir i want to seek your advice and for 30 minutes they are just running their mouth and talking and i'm keeping quiet listening to them and after 30 minutes they say i feel very relieved and i say let's pray <laughs> let's pray They say, sir, and, and you know the Bible says in the book of this and that and that and that and that. A lady, I remember a lady came for counseling and I like putting wine on top of my fridge. And she looked at it and said, I hope this is not alcoholic wine. And I just looked at the lady. She believed that was funny. And then I looked. It means you don't trust. You believe that there's something I'm doing hidden. If I stand and we preach and we make altar call and we talk about standing in holiness and truth and you see wine on my table and you look and I'm feeding you spiritually if you cannot trust that the wine that is on my table is non-alcoholic how can you trust that I'm not sleeping around and moving in integrity how can you trust that I'm not going to get anointing from somewhere are you getting the point now so many people have made themselves failures and we keep blaming God whereas there are irrefutable principles no man outgrows the need to be guided in his life no man at whatever level no man You discover your mentors and you are connected to them divinely at certain seasons of your lives mentors are not necessarily perfect people please is someone getting blessed tonight mentors are not necessarily perfect people they are people who have come who you have come to trust the word and in the instructions of God in their mouth 
Now look at me. There is an attitude that you must have every time you are before a great man. Please listen. This is not human worship. When you sit before a mentor or before a great man, only ask questions and listen. When you sit before a great man, that's not time for discussion. A lot of arrogant people get access to men of God that other people are dying to see. And they sit down and for 30 minutes they are running their mouths and talking nonsense. They are saying we are colleagues in the ministry and we are just talking. Or we are colleagues in this. You sit down with a woman who has trained eight children. And you are a young lady getting married two weeks. You are already talking to her about pregnancy. Say this and that and that. I read it in this book. This woman gave birth to eight children. Out of the eight there were twins and the woman is just looking at you like this yes you went to school i didn't go to school and you sit down you went there and say mommy what advice can you give me now that i'm going into a marital home and you just look and you are wondering after all she was poor i went to school i i, I just returned from america and the woman is just looking at you you believe this woman is too old or naive to understand what you are going through. or maybe a lady is pregnant for instance and maybe she wants to seek advice from a woman because of maybe any complication two months three months into the pregnancy and you now look at her and say mommy is there any way you can help me eight children eight children and you believe is such a level of arrogance Say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to honor and recognize greatness when I see it. When I sit before men who have grace, when I sit before men who mentor my life, I, some, I don't even sit on the chair sometimes. God is my witness. I will sit down and my phone, I'm just waiting. Every time you see results in a man's life, there is more than what you can see. Are you getting my point? If it is the equation of God, there is more than you can see. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me. I will never forget a young man who came from Kaduna. I remember the guy came and sat down and said, um, there's something wrong with my life. And I told the guy, I need to pray for you. He said, no, that's not the issue. And he was talking and saying all kinds of things. And then I was looking. Immediately he entered. I saw a spirit tormenting this guy. I said, let me, <laughs> I need to pray for you. It happened one time with another lady again from a ministry. I will not mention the name. No, she came and was saying all kinds of things. And this guy was talking, talking, talking. And he said, come on, that he even needs to ask me a question about this issue of deliverance. There's something. I said, please, I'm not here to argue with you. There are so many people sitting outside. Can I pray for you? The last thing this guy remembered was that he knelt down on the floor. And the protocol people, when he got up, he had scattered everywhere. Protocol people were helping him. The guy went back to his ministry. He has a ministry. Ah! He, he sent a text. He said, what is all this? And then he came. They came for Koinonia together with some of his, his followers and the people. And it opened him up to another reality. What you see is not all there is. There can be a lot more. I have taken challenges to men that are greater than me. And to me, those challenges look like mountains. But when I take it there, I, they just look and say, Oh, is this it? Do this, do that. This is a simple issue now. And I'm like, goodness, how come I didn't think about this? Just like some people come with challenges and they are complaining. They are shouting. They won't let you talk. They say, you cannot imagine. Where will my school fees come from? Hey, hey, hey. And they are closing next tomorrow or whatever. And you are saying, calm down. Say, where will, do you know what it means to raise 20,000? Calm down. 
whereas maybe God has already instructed you to pay the school fees just calm down it's comforting when you can find a man who can walk over what looks like a mountain for you I cannot tell you how, many, how people come with all kinds of challenges and they come maybe for counseling and you can see that these things have prolonged for years and as soon as they enter I just start smiling because I know in less than 5 minutes this will be over Whereas you can sit down arrogantly and remain there forever. Hallelujah. Help us, Holy Spirit. There is always a price to pay. Please listen. There is always a price to pay to follow an uncommon mentor. There is always a price. It will cost you to follow a true mentor. Adaptation is the key to enjoy the ministry of a mentor in your life. Look at me. Never expect a mentor to adjust to your life. You are joking. If you cannot adjust to the person's life, I'll never forget when I went to Abuja one time to see a particular man of God. Four days, I had not seen him. Four days. And God was my witness that I never complained. I said, Lord, thank you. It's, it's, a, it's a privilege this is how people too wait for counseling to see me and they are not complaining so I have no rights to complain there are people who call me hello hello this and that and that and I tell them okay we have a counseling I say please I don't have that time I can't wait I'm busy Ah, you are coming to see lecturers professors great men and a young man just comes with his sad jeans is there any way we can just see sharp sharp please I have things to do pack your load and go back to your trouble and remain there there is a price never forget this there is a price to pay for mentorship there is a price apostle johnson suleiman was talking and he said something he said that um every time he called um um papa i or richard Jaffa, you know he would call him and then he would say johnson how are you and that's how he would leave the phone there he'll be doing something just suleiman said that's how you wait you can't complain you can't argue you can't off the phone that's how you wait and later on say just a minute i'm coming back and you'll continue doing something else some of you would have been offended and angry and say do you not know i'm an apostle too and then as a while you say okay what is it a mentor is not one who calls you apostle joshua selman you should be able to say joshua come you see that Sometimes we are used to the accolades of men. I am apostle. Even if you say pastor, they say, am I pastor? Is A the same thing as P? I'm not, I mean, you better call the correct thing. May God help us. Because if you get this principle alone, many of us tonight, this is the key to the next level of your life. You have neglected the ministry of great men. There is nothing embarrassing about acknowledging that there are people who have gone ahead of you. Praise the Lord. Pursuit is the only proof of passion. There are people who get angry. Maybe they want to see me and maybe we are away on a trip and then they are angry and they call. They say, I've been calling you for two days. And I say, I'm sorry. What's the issue? They say, please, I've been trusting God for something in my life. And you just finished quarreling me. You have been calling me for two days. I'm not responding. Whereas maybe I was preaching. Whereas maybe I was having time with God. You know, please and please, brothers and sisters, it takes humility to rise to the top. If you are not ready to be humble, get set to remain at that level. Hallelujah. I shared with you my story on how I was already preparing to go to the U.S., to go and scrub the toilet of Charles and Francis Hunter before they died. I was going for a conference, but my mission was to go and scrub the toilet. And I, ins I made up my mind that when I got there, I would insist. I'll tell them my job is to scrub the toilet. For two solid weeks, scrubbing the toilet every day. There are two ways to receive from a man of God. Your seed and your service. 
your seed and your service. You can serve your way into an anointing. You can sow your way into an anointing. Avoid familiarity. I beg you, Koinonia, listen to me. Let my conscience be clear before God that I taught you this. Avoid familiarity. There are people in my life, our daddy prof is here, and the way, the way that, that prof respects me so much, it even makes me embarrassed. I never, never, never will take his grace and his ministry and his wisdom for granted. Never ever. Hallelujah. Many of you do not understand the secret. Listen, please listen. This is where you may be missing a lot of things. You can be with a man of God for a long time. Never forget who you are talking to. It's not enough to talk to people. Never forget who. Jesus looked at them and said, Before your father Abraham was, I am. And they said, ah, What are you saying? Never forget who you are talking to. This is not human worship. It's the law. These are the ancient parts that made people great. I never get familiar. There are all kinds of men of God. Something, something happened yesterday and we're having a conversation. One of the top protocol people in one of the reputable ministries, I won't call their name, just to honor the person. He had been trying to reach me and he had called and called and called and called and somehow the call could not get through. And you know, he looked at his status and he was offended. He is really an honorable person. You see, I mean, the direct, like, PA of one of the great men of God in the country. And he's been trying to reach me. And for whatever reason, when he got to our protocol department, we were in, we were in, in, in a meeting in, um, in Quara State. And so we could not attend to him. And then eventually he got offended. And then when he called, you know, he was speaking and he sounded a bit arrogant. But... When he told me who he was, I would have said, Oga, oh you have told me who you are. Let me tell you who I am too. I just told him, I said, I'm sorry, sir. I really apologize. I am sorry. We do not mean to disrespect the grace or the office that you're working. We apologize on behalf of myself, on behalf of the ministry. Immediately, the man too said, I'm sorry. It's not like I just meant to talk like that. It's just that, you know, this and that and that and that. Never be embarrassed to honor greatness. When a great man rebukes you, shut up. Whether he's right or wrong, keep quiet. Don't get up and say, I'm justifying myself. What is all this human worship? After all, it is God. Continue and see how far it will take you. When an elderly person rebukes me, when someone who has gone ahead of me rebukes me, all I say is, thank you, sir. I'm grateful for the opportunity. You see, many of you don't have the opportunity to see the way these things happen because they happen in the secret place. And so you just believe that every time we're just standing, boss, 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 boss. Oh, I wish it were so. I wish it were so. I wish it were so. Praise the Lord. Number two, principle number two. Let's hurry up. Goodness, time is gone. The law of value. I'm talking about your assignments now. You want to be successful? Please listen to me. This will probably be one of the greatest revelations you've heard about your assignment. I want you to listen. Your assignment is called the law of value. Hebrews 10 verse 7, please. Hebrews 10 verse 7. God is changing someone's life here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10 verse 7. I'd like us to read it. One, two, read. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is what? It has been written. Your assignment, I have come to execute that which has been written. Write a few points about your assignment. Number one, everything created on the earth solves a problem. We taught this to the school of ministry. 
in a, uh, the course called personal transformation everything created not these exact words but then something similar everything created on the earth solves a problem that means everything created has a divine assignment everybody say i have a divine assignment whether you know it or not is irrelevant just say i have a divine assignment because after this teaching tonight in the name of the lord you will stop escorting others in destiny and start making a definite progress as far as your assignment is concerned there are so many people escorting others jacob had a prophetic grace that he never used until at the point of his death and he began to prophesy and see into his children and speak over them every man in the earth is a working solution to a problem everybody in the earth is a working solution to a problem say i am a working solution to a problem yes your existence proves that there was a problem and god sent you to solve it and brothers and sisters fulfilling your destiny is solving that problem for your generation many have died without solving that problem and god had to take their the problems and transfer to other people as a double mandate upon them because some other people were not faithful the problems you solve decides your reward never forget this money is not a miracle money is not magic money is a formula it's a reward for solving problems i can look at your financial level today and i can tell you you are where you are proportionate to the problems you have solved that's why you will pay a gate man ten thousand right but you will pay a manager five hundred thousand what is the difference the problems they are solving the manager is under ac he's wearing suit he has a chef but you are still paying him five hundred thousand the gate man is outside there's no ac in his small room but you are paying him ten thousand you get angry and switch the people let them switch roles for two weeks and see what happens to that corporation let the gate man become the ceo give him all the files to sign and all the decisions to make and then you will see the way everything will nose dive within two weeks so the problem that you solve is what decides your significance god does not decide your significance is god's desire for everybody he said you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood but you decide your significance there is no reason to envy any man. There is no reason to be jealous. Every one of us has in us the ability to solve problems. And the degree of the problems that you solve decides your significance. There are so many men of God angry at, at crowd and they criticize crowd and they say forget it. Crowd does not mean anything. A man can leave his state with so many churches and ministries there and travel a great distance to come and meet a man of God they perceive can be able to solve their problems let me tell you you become a money magnet when you master the art of solving problems men will pay you with their life is someone learning something tonight the problem you solve brothers and sisters decides your your reward I'm ministering the word right now. I'm solving a problem. It's a spiritual problem. Are you seeing that? Anybody who says preachers should not be blessed does not know what he's saying. Whenever you solve a problem according to the kingdom, there is a reward. Whether you sell it or you give it free, this is the only reason why I am not charging you for listening. Is that true? Because the Jehovah Jireh of my life who made this law in place will never leave me hungry you want money you want prosperity what problem are you solving whose problem are you solving are you seeing why the wealth of an armed robber is wrong because an armed robber points a gun he's not solving any problem but he wants to be rewarded prosperity is not a mystery brothers and sisters the problems you solve decide your significance when you solve a problem you create a 
divine debt d-e-b-t you create a divine debt it's like when you solve problems here on earth god is like making god i mean god owes you let me put it that way your assignment is decided by god but is discovered by you let's hurry up your assignment in life is decided by god but it is discovered by you jeremiah chapter 1 he began to speak to the prophet he said while you were in your mother's womb i called you and i ordained you to be a prophet is someone getting blessed now right the most important revelation you need to have about your assignment is what your uniqueness is your lifting is not in your similarity with others it is your difference your uniqueness there are many preachers in nigeria there are many preachers in zaria there are many preachers in kaduna what makes my ministry different what makes my ministry to the body of christ different what listen concentrate on your uniqueness not your similarity when it comes to purpose your uniqueness becomes your edge so if you are selling recharge card brother b is selling recharge card what is your difference what is that distinguishing factor that's what gives you an edge oh hallelujah i thank god for his wisdom how do you discover your assignment let's write it very quickly how do you discover your assignment number one what you hate is a clue to what you have been called to solve write it what you hate passionately is a clue that you have been anointed to solve it anger is the seed for change whatever gets you angry and agitated is what you were designed to change i hate ignorance I hate the effect of poverty on people i hate it with a passion i hate ignorance of the principles of god i hate the fact that people do not recognize the lordship of christ and these things have constructed my passion they have built the framework of my teachings what agitates you take note of the pain and the things that annoy you write very quickly two things that really agitate you that every time you see it you cry and you wish for change there is an anointing there there is always an anointing in the place of pain pain is the birthplace for genuine anointing thank you jesus christ identify your highest point of anger identify your highest point of anger there is something that agitates you when you see people go through it when you see your family members go through it something in you cries that's the anointing of the spirit hallelujah when moses saw the egyptians suffering something in him started rising up because there was a deliverer in him are you getting my point now to an extent that he killed somebody have you been ignoring your pain do you know that in your pain is the voice of the spirit god has been speaking to you that you have been anointed for this reason there are many of us god has has anointed us to be saviors he has brought us in different mountains to do mighty things for the kingdom are you seeing what we have refused we have ignored please let me have your attention don't worry the holy spirit is just doing his thing God has anointed us in different ways. Take note of your pain. Take note. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number two, what do you love to talk about most in your life? Oh, that's a clue to your assignment. What do you love to talk about? There are many of you, you sit down five minutes, you have already seen the clothes everybody is wearing in Koinonia. There is grace there. Don't let anybody preach you out of it. There are some of you, when you see children, they can even flog you because of children. There is grace. 
your passions your passion when the anointing of the spirit comes upon your passion i remember when i was in secondary school i would give everything the little money that i'll have i will share it and give everybody they will buy meat buy, buy everything and i will suffer like a fool but it was a passion i could not help there are many families who build houses and just keep it and say when a man of god comes to town let him come and stay have you seen people like that there, is, there are passions it's just that many of us have not been trained to honor our passions say after me in the name of jesus i will study my passions and i take my passions as a voice as the voice of god speaking over my destiny what is the conversation that excites you there are conversations that when you start in my presence i'm going to sleep or send you away i guarantee you even if you mention jesus in the middle of the conversation but there are things that excite me is it not amazing how somebody can be watching maybe a fashion show passionately and you are sleeping and snoring the interest is just not there whereas you put Benny in and i can be watching a crusade and i'm watching i'm struggling with sleep i'm nodding but i'm i'm focused and i say what is this stress sleep there is something it's like fire in your bones have you been responding to your passions when you find your assignment you have found your reward system in life when you find your assignment brothers and sisters you have signed exit out of a world of failure and poverty and mediocrity and i mean what i'm saying when you truly find your assignment when the spirit takes over your soul when the spirit takes over your soul you will be changed his glory will be revealed when the spirit takes over your soul your assignment must become your obsession brothers and sisters you will never excel in any area that has not become an obsession for you your assignment must become your obsession and let me challenge you with one more thing before we round up this assignment issue listen to me there must be a theme that that defines the entire scope of your life let me tell you what that means every time you mention or a robot what comes into your heart healing is that true Benny Hinn, healing is that true Billy Graham evangelism JJ Okocha is that true if I mention your name and nothing comes to my mind your difference has not been refined enough hallelujah are you getting my point when you say Tiger Woods golf right Tyra Banks, fashion people, see them all smiling. Praise God. If your life's mission cannot be summarized in one word, you do not know it. You can say my life's mission is, is to bring the rescue, the, the, the lost sheep, you know, from all the wilderness. Look, all of that long story, there must be a theme that you can live for and die for hallelujah now i want to tell you something very powerful take note of opportunities in your life everything that rises from god camouflages as opportunities take note of opportunities opportunities help you to reveal discover and explore your assignment many of us do not know that god speaks through opportunities god never told david to kill goliath he saw an opportunity and he saw that he had been equipped to maximize that opportunity 
and he took advantage of that opportunity into an unending world he got a wife for free he got wealth for free because he maximized an opportunity and i want to tell you something god speaks again through favor this is how you know that you have been called in an area never stay in an area where there is no favor it's a sign that god is not there even in the prison joseph was still favored that's a sign that god is with you please and please make up your mind to follow the path of favor there are many of us struggling in areas where it's obvious god has been using the language of favor or otherwise to speak to you favor everybody say favor god speaks to you through favor never stay in a place where there is no favor the next thing you need to know about your assignment is that your assignment is geographical please get this you are not sent everywhere oh the lord may tell you in a vision i'm sending you to the nations that is a pregnant statement because you will raise other people who will get to the nations no single man will conquer the whole world you are sent to a person or a group of people you will always be celebrated when you get to the people where your anointing has been sent to bless stop trying to seek for recognition or approval everywhere god has not sent me to everybody it is good for me to understand that god has sent me to a people anytime you get to a place where you have been sent they will receive your anointing there are many people struggling in regions that god has not sent them they are trying to heal the sick they are trying to do everything forcing healing ministries forcing evangel they have run the whole ministry into death they are trying to organize crusades there is no grace there never forget that your assignment has its geography and isaac sold in that land not in any land abraham come i will take you to a place that is where i will bless you brothers and sisters after this program use this weekend especially for those who are trusting god for a place where you will stay you must never sit down and allow job to decide your geography is a costly decision are you getting what i'm saying you must flog it out go on a fast for one day or two days if you can't fast take fruits or something light and flog it out with destiny and say oh god i know that my prosperity and my blessing is tied to geography let me tell you something i come from plateau state and the little years i've had serving god and ministry that state never opened up to me they were never opened and prepared to receive of my grace and it bothered me because i was blessing other people and blessing other states and i said lord what is it about this place this is my own very place let me be a blessing to them and god kept telling me again and again they are not ready to receive your anointing there is too much familiarity and do you know what happened the, the city of Joss opened up for me through my teachings. They never even knew I was the one. It was students from Futmina and Yola and all of that, including my neighbor. I mean neighbors that we grew up together. They took my teaching. My own uncle, my own uncle listened to one of my teachings and started crying. And then got to find out I was the one. And he cried and said, my own son is in ministry and is changing the world and i'm here dying and so that that familiarity they received the teaching not knowing it was me and then when they had now respected the anointing then god opened up to them it is this person are you getting the point now that's the reason why although many of you are anointed you find out that every time you get home you just feel ordinary that presence of the anointing never comes because you are the last born you are the child everybody knows even if you tell them God is saying they say shut up what do you know about God 
but the day they are ready to receive your anointing they will be amazed at the dimension that they will enter your assignment is geographical thank you jesus christ your difference will be rewarded when you are geographically accurate listen listen please listen look up look up before you write let me explain something to you um come sam how many of you agree and believe that sam is a powerful worshiper but do you know as gifted as sam can be sam can be in a territory where his grace is not celebrated and appreciated how many of you have been in a place you know it's not pride that god has honored you there are graces there are giftings but you are in a territory where nobody can celebrate your grace and god takes you even for a moment to a place and goodness even you you are shocked you never knew that you were that great until you got to that place and you see people celebrating that grace has it happened to anybody you keep singing and when you sing they just tell you go and sit down and you get to a place where people say sorry sir are you living right now please can you come and minister in our church which hotel are you saying say they, they kept me in one can they say please come 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 make make arrangement make and you are saying goodness look let me tell you there are things that people do for me when i go for ministrations and i'm amazed i'm almost saying oh god please let this thing not become human worship and i'm i'm shocked honestly when i'm in my hotel room i'm now looking i'm like goodness ah i will discover every other thing that is left that i've not discovered oh when you are in the geography of your assignment men will pay you in a way that will shock you they will pay for any and everything to receive your grace stop concentrating on places where you are tolerated there are many of you you are everybody tolerates you everywhere there is a place where your grace can be celebrated and I tell you, part of my life's goal as a leader in this ministry is to harness the giftings of people and to celebrate it and to make them great. Sam, God bless you. When we went to Quara State, Sam ministered and he led worship. He was so powerful. When it was the time, I don't know how many times he has seen himself as a man of God. Goodness, that was the first time I saw Sam moving very powerfully powerfully in the anointing i mean it was time to minister to the worshipers and you could see the anointing and the grace and these people were receiving after the ministration or oh, everybody almost every i think everybody except they were teasing yerima and they say it was only yerima they didn't come to meet him for counseling because he was a media person he was just snapping but everybody from protocol to every one of the people there were piles of people waiting for counseling you know what tells what that tells me those people have recognized their grace but they may come back home and you can just look at them sam how are you and you just shake him and say sam can you please come we have one small fellowship can you just sing one or two choruses <laughs> celebrate greatness when you enter its presence don't be embarrassed don't pretend it's not there i always celebrate them they know it i celebrate the workers that's why we organize dinner at the end of the year for them to honor them to bless them and i use the opportunity to tell them i am grateful it's easy for people to see what god is doing in this ministry and say it's joshua selman it's not true what you see is the brainchild of people who are by far smarter than me greater than me who have decided to submit their gifts to be used for the kingdom and i'm wise enough to know that these people deserve honor are you getting my point now that's why we provide free bus transport because we we respect the gift of god that is in you people and everyone here we never you never see me treat people based on who your father is i don't want to know whether your father is a minister whether you are married to to the to a relation of the president uh -uh. no we no man after the flesh when you come here we treat you with dignity and respect as much as possible is someone learning something please let's finish up on the assignment and touch the last law and then we'll pray just give me 10 minutes and then we'll be out of here 
when you are where you are assigned nobody can compete with you this is a powerful revelation when you are at the place of your assignment hear me brothers and sisters no man can compete with you i see a lot of preachers struggling i've seen a lot of men of god with all humility wasting their time and their energy trying to do the things that i'm doing i'm doing it with ease because there is grace there i see a lot of people struggling putting themselves under needless pressure and i say why why i never try to do what i am not gifted anointed skilled or trained for i rather bring in a grace that can function in that capacity and then we receive of that ministry now let me advise you especially if you are in ministry or you are in any form of leadership there's something i wrote that is very powerful you don't give yourself to people listen you give yourself to god and you give god to the people you will die if you want to meet everybody's needs by yourself Give yourself to God and give God to the people. Many preachers are dying and killing themselves. They want to do everything for everybody. No, sir. No, sir. Give yourself to God and then give God to the people. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Number three. This is the last and then we'll pray someone's life is changing tonight i tell you you will walk out of this place knowing that you will enter extraordinary success i don't care what the limitations are in the name of jesus christ as we talk about this just just pray can you just pray in one minute and say lord i love your laws i love your laws go ahead and pray just pray in one minute as i talk about this last law just few minutes our time is gone and then you will be blessed and will pray. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love, I love, I love your truth. Hallelujah. Somebody's life is about to change. First Timothy chapter 5, 17 and 18. The last law we'll talk about is the law of honor. The law of honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every time I teach on this, something happens to someone's destiny. The law of honor. First Timothy 5, 17 and 18. Look up everybody let's read one to read let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of what double honor especially they that labor in word and in doctrine hallelujah let's look at one more scripture first peter 2 verse 17 and then i'll teach this for me is one of the greatest laws of success it may not be like that for you but this for me Everybody read. One to read. One more time. For the last time now. One to go. Honor all men. And honor the king honor all men and honor the king wisdom is the ability to recognize difference 
But honor is the celebration and the rewarding of that difference. To honor a man means to celebrate and to reward his uniqueness. That's what it means to honor. To honor a man means to celebrate and reward his uniqueness. Please look up. Honor in the school of success is the seed for access. Say it one more time. Everybody, honor is the seed for access. You will never access a place, a grace, an anointing, a dimension of wisdom that you dishonor. Every grace you dishonor lives your life. Every grace you honor is multiplied in your life. Never forget this. Never forget this. When the devil wants to drain you of grace, he makes you to begin to dishonor the graces around you. And you find out that nothing will be. The Bible says, honor all men and then honor the king. This is why we take our time to worship God. We take our time to honor the king. Honor always creates favor. Let me tell you this. If you've been looking for how to create favor in your life, I'm telling you how it comes now. Favor, honor always creates favor 100% of the time. The favor in your life will flow in the direction of honor. You dishonor men, you will never experience favor. Listen, listen. Look at me. This is Pastor, Pastor Pete Rock's wife. Get this. Hallelujah. Pastor Pete is my friend. He's my brother in the ministry. I love him so much. He respects me so much and I honor him so much. This is his wife. Are you getting my point? If I treat his wife well, I have communicated that honor. She will speak well about me in the presence of her husband. And in the presence of another is that true is that true so i am teaching you that the reason why many of us have not seen favor with men is that we have not engaged the law of honor many young people do not honor their parents and you do not know why favor does not leave them to you there's all kinds of disrespect around the Bible says, honor your father and your mother. Let me tell you why many young people are struggling in Nigeria. I, I want to be very sincere with you. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother. It says, so that your days will be long and it will go well with you. Are you seeing why it's not going well with many people? I know people who stand and look at their parents and insult them. Call their mother prostitute. Call their father drunkard. And it may be true what they are saying. But let me tell you the truth. You dishonor your parents, you are in for failure. Failure that God will not stop, except you cry for mercy and change. Is someone getting blessed? Never dishonor elders. I don't care what level of grace you get to. As I am like this, if I see an elderly woman that I know, carrying something maybe she went to grind and all of that i see mothers around they go to the engine to go and grind by themselves as old as they are they put it on their head they are going and immediately they are going you see the child just bouncing out with one lady he calls his girlfriend or one guy she calls her boyfriend they don't even know what they are doing they are just bouncing and they are, mom see ya and they are going and the mother is carrying this this is dishonor the Bible says if you don't honor your parents, listen to what I'm telling you. It says it will not be well with you. As simple as that. Hallelujah. Oh, I will say it. I will say it. There are many of us, we have no respect at all for elderly people. There are even people that beat their parents. That one is not just that it will not be well with you. You just brought a curse upon your life. If you ever take your hand and beat an elderly person, 
especially your parents whether they speak to you or not i am telling you scripturally the bible says a man that curses his father his light shall be taken away and it shall be dim for him that's what the bible says i will never never rebuke an elder these are laws there are many graduates they thought it's just getting degree now you have gotten the degree nothing is happening they thought it's just oratory and all of that. No. They thought it's just reading business books. They've read all the business books. There are no patriarchal blessings upon their lives. No parental blessing. There's no elderly person that has spoken to you and said, let it go well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. The law of honor. Honor creates favor. What is favor? Favor is someone willing to solve your problems for you. That's favor. When someone is willing to solve your problems for you. Whether financial problems, spiritual problems. When you honor men, you have access to their grace. Look, let me tell you. If a door has been closing again and again and again especially the door to the grace of a man of god check well there is dishonor there the entire ten commandments was all about honor honoring god and honoring men god is so obsessed with honor it's not enough to believe in a man of god you must honor that man to ever get the grace i taught this in commanding results and it's all oh goodness i cannot begin to tell you the testimonies that have come from people Many of us do not honor grace. You allow familiarity. I'm not teaching human worship. Hallelujah. Learn to celebrate greatness when you see it. Please write this down. Learn to celebrate greatness. Never trivialize a man's accomplishments, especially if he's spectacular. You say, This woman is a director. In, in, in this particular parastata. So what about it? Anybody can be a director. Why are you not a director? It's amazing how we trivialize a lot of things. And she's behaving like this. Is it because she's a man of God's wife? What's the big deal about being a man of God's wife? That's why God didn't make you a man of God's wife. You see that? Celebrate greatness. I, I, I shared this and I'll say it again. I will never allow a man greater than me to be in a place and he's paying for something I can pay for and it's within my power to pay. I will fight with that man there or that woman. Man of God or no man of God. I will fight till I pay for it. But there are many of us. You come and sit down and you see elderly people standing and you just sit down. Say, I beg, forget oh, This is not the issue of anything. This is my right. You see a lot of people do that. And we laugh about it. And you find out that in spite of all the prayer and the anointing service and everything, no job, no marriage, no nothing. And you do not know that this is the law we are violating. How many children have gone to meet their parents to kneel down and say, I'm of a marriageable age right now. Please bless me. Release the anointing that made you get married upon my life. You are there complaining that the home is not going well. You, you thought you were playing. Now 35, 36 and counting. Learn this night. God is bringing deliverance for you. It's not everything that is about witches and wizards. We like passing responsibility to the devil. Take responsibility this night. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Honor. There are many men of God. They, they have little ministries, 10 members, 12 members, and you hear the way they preach and lambast ministers. See, I had uh, the other day, the other man talking, and do, they know nothing about organization. They know nothing about finance. They don't even have the money to be able to learn finances. They know nothing about organization. Yet they sit down in that little mindset, local champions, and begin to castigate and, and, and talk about everybody. See, stop it tonight. If you are in the attitude of trivializing people's success, 
Repent tonight. Every time you see success, kill envy fast by celebrating it immediately. The lady is beautiful. Say it fast before the devil now tells you this and that. Ah, I appreciate you. You're a lovely lady. Very pretty. God bless you. That's all. You can never criticize what you have celebrated. Hallelujah. Sam is singing, eh? He's singing, but what's the, what's the big deal, Jare? There's one other guy that sang. It's really not about the other guy. He's intimidated, so he's using the other guy to turn down another person. You, you cannot sing anything. Now you are, you are just looking and saying, well, this lady, what's she trying? She's trying to show us that she can speak English. Once you find yourself criticizing people, you are communicating a dissatisfaction. It's natural with human beings. Manage it through the law of honor. Are you getting what I'm saying? I celebrate men of God. I celebrate vessels of honor generously. Many of us are very embarrassed. Let me tell you a few things that you should never do. Look up please. Never try to introduce a pastor or a preacher in your church or your fellowship and say this is not a new person is one of us is is one of our friends i you know he's not a he says you know a lot of people do that they say this is one of us uh, and then somebody who has trained and helped and invested in you say he's is an elder uncle just because he cannot accept that he's a great man and we begin to use all kinds of english see that or if i want to introduce um pete rock's wife now she was a member of koinonia here before he used his eagle eyes <laughs> you know all all of that and then he came up and and carried and all and all of that but listen it has changed hallelujah i can keep looking at her and say this and that uh -uh. this is my friend's wife and she deserves my honor and i will honor her any day I will never see her trekking somewhere and not stop the car to pick her. I don't care where she's going. This is honor. Are you getting my point? Many of you do not know the law of honor. I celebrate men in the secret and in the open. I've been following a conference. A conference right now. I had to follow Mike Mudok's conference with David Ibiome. And I've been listening pastor and eating the videos again and again. There's a conference going on in Koza. I cannot attend it. And I've been following it online. Paying the internet right now as I'm preaching. It's paining me, but I'm supposed, <laughs> I'm supposed to have been following the conference. But I sure will remedy for it. Benihin came to Accra. I was happy. I said, I, I, must, I must go and meet him. I, know. I was so excited. When I checked the date, I found that it was miracle service. I said, ah... Oh God, you have to compensate me for this. If you are embarrassed about honor, you will not be honored too. Are you getting my point? Please, is somebody learning this tonight? Say in the name of Jesus, I honor all men. Now turn to your neighbor and say, I honor you and I celebrate you truly. Say it. Even if he's pinching you, say it. I know he's not your mate, but say it. I honor you and I celebrate you greatly. Turn to another person and say, I honor you. I know you fought in the morning, but say it, I honor you. Hallelujah. Never trivialize greatness, no matter how little it is. Never trivialize greatness. Never trivialize greatness. They invite you to go and preach. And you know that this is a church that you never who dash monkey banana. It, it never is just favor. Don't pretend as though we have been ministering in this kind of churches. Uh -uh. Celebrate the gift. Celebrate the grace. Do what God has called you to do. God is giving us wisdom tonight. Hallelujah. Never come into the presence of greatness empty handed. I'm teaching you one powerful law of honor. Please, look, I can, I can get down on my knees and beg you. If you want extraordinary success, never make it a culture 
do it delightsomely do not cultivate the attitude of coming into the presence of a great man empty handed if you do not have a seed look for opportunities to serve are you getting what I'm saying I never see a man of God empty handed no matter what happens and I'm not talking about this kind of ridiculous seeds that was talked about in Malachi chapter 1 that people can't no, no you don't bless a great man with leftovers you bless a great man honorably I'm teaching you principles that make for great men I lift my hands in worship as I sing praises to your name, Father, I lift my hands in worship. As I sing glory to your name, I never go to see my father or my mother empty handed. Never. Never never is is a taboo as far as i'm concerned never i never go to greet and see an elderly person if if even if i don't take a gift then it means i'm going to send something but many of us we do not understand that these are little principles this is how the kingdom is built you neglect it at your detriment I'm rounding up. There are two ways I taught you to receive from a great man. One is service and the other is seed. If you don't have money, go and look for the man of God's clothes. Say, Sam, just early in the morning, just say, Sam, I came to your house. Where are your clothes? Sam will say, no. Say, chill me here. Bring it out. And you carry a bucket and you are washing Hebrews 7, 7 and without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater you see a woman you go to her house and say mommy i came to wash your plates today say no no my daughter there are no plates carry the ones that are clean say they are dusty soak them again lord this is how i will have my home this is how i will be blessed the law of honor you can tap into anointings and leave the realm that you are now hallelujah Praise the Lord Jesus. Now, let me say something. Because I know that there are people who are ministers here and there are many who will be listening. Please listen to this. Never invite a man of God, whether a music minister, a worship minister, for a meeting without intentionally planning to honor him. You see, a lot of people do this in the body of Christ. Let me correct it now. Hallelujah. This is an apostolic ministry. We speak to the body of Christ. And I'm speaking to the body of Christ. He must be corrected. Never invite a man of God that you do not have capacity to bless his grace or his gift. Are you getting my point? There are many people who want to bring every great man of God, but they are not prepared. If I am going to bring this man as a professional decorator, for instance, I must have the ability to honor his grace. If I cannot use what you have, please, is somebody getting blessed? There are so many people, I want to invite this, I want to invite that. There are so many men of God that have been pained because people just invite them, come for a meeting, and they never make adequate arrangement. There are laws and principles in this ministry. There are very few men of God who have invited here. And I can tell you this with all humility. When we invite a man of God, we, we prepare as if it's marriage. Because if we think that grace is not enough to bless us, then we better not invite him. Are you getting my point? When we invite a man of God right from the junction, the protocol department is waiting for him. When he gets there, they pick him. There are people who invite a man of God and it's when he comes, you go and you keep him standing and you are paying for his hotel room. He says, sorry, how much is this room? Is it double or single, standard or this thing? And the man is, you have been planning for a meeting for a long time. Are you getting my point? Now Pastor Williams is just standing. 
and you are wondering or a man of god that you invite you say has he come he's outside you just say sorry please stand up stand up keep these two seats sir you are welcome what are you doing you are not intentional about the spirit of excellence and now i know that many people have not been trained to recognize this but i want you to know you will never receive maximally from an anointing that you do not honor I have found myself teaching and pouring myself in meetings because of the way that I was honored. They honored me from my arrival to my departure. And I found out that there was an unusual flow of grace. I, I went the extra mile to have maybe meetings with leaders or people like that because of honor. But there are meetings you go for, you can't wait for the last session. Immediately it finishes, you just, you just everybody, pack your load and let's leave this place never make your ministry like that there are four things that you must look at when you are inviting a man of god let me use the opportunity and say this number one his hospitality hospitality especially when you are it's okay if you are inviting a man of god that is within your region please say it because this has not been taught in the body of christ number one hospitality never carry a man of god and come and frustrate him in a place because you think you are invited no don't do that hospitality hallelujah prepare very well let the man of god eat well if he's fasting ask him don't assume don't say bring only dinner i already know this guy he's always fasting what if he's not fasting that day Number two, prepare to celebrate his grace publicly. Hallelujah. Prepare to celebrate his grace. I'm teaching you how to receive graces. There are places I've gone for once, it will take God instructing me to go there again. When God speaks, then I go particularly just because I'm obeying the voice of God. Otherwise, I will never go there out of personal comfort again. No, no. Number three, let there be the spirit of excellence in your organization. Excellence does not have to mean that you are expensive. Excellence just means the highest level of order. Let there be the highest level of order. And then number four, honor the man. As much as possible, let there be an honorarium honorarium simply means that a gift or whatever means of appreciating and celebrating his grace just like teachers you can never really reward mentors and men of god and great men make sure you never bring a man of god i remember one of my friends who went to preach somewhere they had been disturbing this guy and when he went to preach i'm being sincere with you <laughs> immediately he finished the, you know this kind of this kind of um these wire papers they just squeeze 500 naira, roll, roll it as if it's bribe, and just say, May we thank you for your grace. Ah, bah. I'm, I'm serious, I'm not exaggerating. Now, imagine that that man of God has a wife. Are you getting my point? And now, this man left his wife for three days. This is his job, this is where God blesses him, and he comes back after three days, right? And she's happy, she welcomes him. And the man said, we came back from the vineyard of the Lord. We have done exploits for the kingdom. Blind eyes were open. You know, sick bodies. And then they just bring this PTA. You know this PTA letter of primary school. Where they, they will leave dash and they put their mouth. And say, honey, just to remind you that uh, Junior is going to school day after tomorrow. And the man of God becomes angry. He's frowning at everybody in the house because he is saving the, the sinners but his family is dying. Never bring a man of God that you are not your capacity. Don't say I can bring anybody. Let me tell you the mistake. There are many people who try to bring men of God and they overlook these things. And when it happens, it's like it endorses their error. And so they say, look, even so, so, so and so person we have brought him, talk more of you. You don't know the inconvenience that person went through. And he just did it for the sake of the gospel. By the grace of God, if you see us invite anybody in this house, I can tell you, at the level of exposure and excellence and finance and blessing that God has given us, 
we will honor and make sure that this man is blessed blessed enough that if we call him tomorrow he will say thank you I'm coming everybody say the law of honor any anointing that you do not honor you will never receive anything from and let me tell you brothers and sisters the breakthrough or the key to your next level is hidden in an anointing that may not be so far from you from scripture our breakthrough is always closer to us than we can ever imagine the problem is we keep looking far that breakthrough may be your mother in the same house you've gone to every man of god and every prophet and every herbalist but your mother who has that anointing to set you free there are people who again and again they probably have not been healed because they have not honored what god is doing in this house we are going to pray these keys that i've shared with you will give you uncommon success you can see the book that i'm writing them this these are keys that I am applying in my own life. And those who have gone ahead of us, who found this ancient path, told us that this is the way. And we confirm by the ministry of the Holy Spirit that this is it. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe. That God is able to do anything at all. When you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry. And the various ways the Holy Spirit worked with you till you came today. You should know already that there is a God in heaven. Are we together now? Brothers and sisters. I present to you this same God. Who can change your life. Who will change your life. I'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others. Wow, this is how God has changed this lady's life. Wow, we are soon going to pray. You must have a desperation and say, Lord, I didn't come tonight to clap for anybody. I left my journey wherever. Lord, I know that you will visit me. And I hold on to the horns of the altar. While you are sitting, the devil is telling you, remember tomorrow by 12, your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer i believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute I want you to just mention everything you are trusting God to do tonight. Go ahead. Lord, I believe you for this. I believe you for that. Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? 
don't believe as you are praying don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time God of heaven It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, it says, make your request known. Don't assume it is known. Make your request known. Lord, I'm here tonight because I want you to turn the situation of my family around. Lord, there is a death sentence over my family, and you have to arise for me tonight. Lord, there is a death sentence over my life. Lord, I've been delayed 10 years of my life. I am backward 10 years. There has to be a way you restore me, oh God. Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life. Something has happened to the glory upon my destiny. I'm here tonight, oh God, turn my life around. Turn my life around something has happened the signs and wonders are no more like before the revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before i'm here for a turnaround oh god my prayer life has died i'm here for a reawakening i no longer fast i no longer pray i don't know what has happened to me i cry for help Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the broken hearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison 
my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse verse 2 to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn it takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men it takes the anointing verse 3 to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion now this is the part I like to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning hallelujah the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified so the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state no so anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive I've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you Jesus Christ let me give us one last prayer point father every desire I brought here tonight I'm not walking back with it lift your voice and pray every let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakatos. Talato shabra hasikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barateke barakos. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. Oh! comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands. 
inside outside online and i declare spirit of the living god there are men and women here who have been delayed and speed must come upon them right now i declare at the count of three one two three receive that grace i command speed speed right now speed let the hand of god come upon you the bible says the hand of the lord was upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jisrael i command speed receive it is coming on you now some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family it's not just you alone it's coming on you for the sake of your family let the chains be broken i release speed speed in one month in one month i'm prophesying that in one month what has not been done in five years in one month receive that grace i energize your spirit man speed when speed comes upon a family you will see it in the result when speed comes upon your spiritual life when speed comes upon your academics i'm praying again the angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed i release that grace let that anointing come upon you speed speed in the name of Jesus Christ, speed. Shalakato sadakata, sheketo kata shalakato ziata. now now listen fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit even spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out 
Fire. The mystery of fire. Shabos Katabarata. I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Sing below, Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Hallelujah. Madam, please clear the way for me. This woman, tap this woman for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is, this the, is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around and it will surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ, where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. It's leaving my hands and it's coming upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, where is that man? We have to hurry up. There's, there's a lot to do. In the name of Jesus Christ. Mama, I decree and declare over your life. That fire. The Lord, it looks like you are an elderly woman, but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now, 
it's not just a miracle yet you are receiving an impartation you will begin to know the holy spirit in a very intimate way hold my hand spirit of the living god you seek to use this dear mother in the name of jesus christ you will know the holy spirit in supernatural ways his fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way in the name of jesus come you are the man that came from Eduguri. what is this your cv you are trusting god for a job and who is this hold it do you believe that if i pray for you you are returning with a job you believe that hold my hands in the name of jesus i release the anointing upon you and i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, oh dear, sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter, congratulations, listen. And I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God, if this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace you must testify I declare whatever it will translate to whether a job whether increase whether promotion I command it I declare it I decree it. in the name of Jesus I command it I decree it I declare it right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family I command that is gone now in the name of Jesus it is gone I curse the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray in the name of jesus whatever has not been working in your life i force it to work right now receive that anointing i force it to work now inside outside i force it to work now those following online i pray and i speak whatever it is that you are doing i declare the blessing i activate the blessing upon the work of your hand i take away hardship from your life in the name of jesus christ i take away hardship from your life 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Sarking al janna ya bone na ka bone na ka sujada ne na ka sarking salama sarking al janna the lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is i'm seeing fire Still, this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision may the lord show you where the resources of your destiny is may the lord show you where your helpers are in the name of jesus christ hallelujah this the prayer is for everybody eh? but this particular prayer now is for ladies the Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed outwardly you are beautiful you are good-looking you are virtuous you are wonderful but in the realm of the spirit is not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in this in the realm of the spirit a man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful the gate was beautiful but the man's life was nonsense there are many people you can stand i'm, I'm saying everybody but this is specifically for our sisters and it's not just the issue of marriage i'm not talking about marriage alone that there is a fragrance a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life but many of you physically they look at you and you look like you are beautiful you are this you are that but in the realm of the spirit there are powers sitting on people's destiny in the name of jesus lift your hands i want to pray for you that that force that veil must be torn in the name of jesus Ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people especially our sisters I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny right now by the fire of the Holy Ghost Sisters, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. I declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is. I change it now in the name of Jesus. I change it now in the name of Jesus. Listen, a man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives? A man's destiny can be a shadow of something else. You know you are alive, but this is not your life. You know that you are living another person's script. I'm saying it again. In the name that is above all names. Sir, come.
I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. Uh, you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your is your dad. Where did he come from? From high in the air. From where? High from high in the air. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare in the name of Jesus anyone who has exchanged your destiny sir I decree and declare restoration now. You are the daughter. Hold my hands. I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady. Huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married with that one. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now. Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil, you are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes. You have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible said, don't let your good evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up you are saying what is this? I pray for you and the person says so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear I want to pray for you. Eh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is you know things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Eh? Favor will come close to you but then never enter your life. Yes. What do you do? I'm working in a security. You are a security? Yes, sir. Did you go to school? Yes, sir. I'm running my master's. You are running your master's? Yes, sir. My dear, do you believe God can change your life yes, now? Yes, sir. I believe, sir. Hold my hands. To appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint this one is a prophet's reward it's not just that god is saying put this there is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward the possibilities that accompany an office i declare in the name of the god of heaven whom i represent may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you listen i lift you from this security work you are doing and i put you in a position that befits your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it. I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer. Because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare. I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny, I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sent your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. 
there are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth simply in the name of job are we together nonsense job that on sunday you're on your way going to church your boss calls you and says you must come and resume what shall it profit a man if you gain the what is it is that the whole world how much is the salary lose your soul for peanuts i declare again in the name of jesus may my god relocate someone here by the power of the holy spirit may my god relocate a destiny relocate a family if you are not in your assigned place i shift you tonight in the name of jesus christ do you know listen we're going to pray for the sick shortly there are people that if the devil wants to destroy them he will make sure they get visa ah pastor james good to see you there are people that the devil wants to destroy them they will get visa to uk they think it's breakthrough but they have gone away from their place of destiny god spoke to jonah go to nineveh jonah entered a boat on his way to Tarsus, and because of that wrong journey people lost their properties people lost he entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives they were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons let me tell you this it matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you the devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life there are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country you see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad and there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere and Isaac sowed in that land it's not just that he sowed the place he sowed matters Isaac sowed in that land Abraham take now thy son and go go to a location that's where I will meet with you God is everywhere but destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians, you go to embassies and see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock direction direction please in one minute before we pray for the sick lift your voice and say lord direct me he said the lord is my shepherd direct me there is a way that cement right unto a man unto a woman unto a family direction your blessing is not just generically in u.s or uk there are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincingly, knowing that God is going to touch you. 
And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send, you can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jakes is here. Are we together now? Overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand. Those who are in here, you are trusting God to touch you, to touch your family members. You can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's do that very quickly. While we are doing that, please, if you have written your prayer request, I want you to wave it and ushers, you may find a way of splitting yourselves very quickly. Let's, let's have ushers. If the ushers are not in our PR department, you can join them and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request um, is obtained, please. For those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. In the name of Jesus, we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing. Pastor Jex Ejimi, there. Um, Pastor Alpha, Benga, Overflow, One. Pastor Femi, Promise, Overflow, Two. Please, quickly, quickly. Let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people. God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you, just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
angels ascending, angels descending, heaven touches earth in this place, in this place. Fire is burning, incense is rising, heaven touches earth in this place.
That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. That's what my song will be. And that's what my song will be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what my song will be. 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 Come on, what my song will be and that's what my song will be hallelujah that's what my song will be that's what my song will be that's what my song will be Kado Please if you are here to submit your request, just do it as soon as we are done. There are people waving their request there. So while the worship team is leading us, please make sure that make sure that you are in the spirit of worship and not as if you feel it, but make sure your heart is connected. So Alpha and Omega We worship your name yeah. We worship your name 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 We worship Alpha and Omega We worship your name praying on your request now i'd like you to open your heart just pray in the spirit in one minute those following from any nation of the world i'd like you to just pray we're just going to pray and speak over this go ahead stretch your hands we're praying on this request father let your people return with testimonies Ashala gata brada gata baraka to sata brada gadech in the cross sazia sahasa baraka to shabrada gata balada ba rakata branda gata balada bush e pratos kada brandi giri balada bush father in the 
the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abound. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto unbeatable lord you will bend things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will change things tonight in the name of jesus you will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit you bring healings you bring deliverance you will bring breakthrough financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus you bring changes lord deaths supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit lord we give you praise we give you glory Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any requests to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life i declare by the hand of god almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of jesus christ 
what you cannot do for yourself i ask my god to do it for you in this season if you're a man of god here i prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of god may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough I've taught you the principles of finances but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth are we together now and in the name of Jesus I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season In the name of Jesus I pray for every family represented here in the name of Jesus and I say this from the depth of my heart enough is enough I prophesy it again enough is enough whatever represents setbacks in any family I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night every graduate here that is trusting God for a job you heard the testimony here in the name of Jesus Christ both where you applied and where you didn't apply may the angel of the Lord see to which that a miracle job locates you those who are in business here in the name of Jesus business is spiritual the grace that will cause your business to command strange results may that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ if there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God that means if God does not step in for you you know you are in trouble I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life come out of that trouble now whether it's a financial trouble whether it's whatever come out of it now in the name of Jesus Christ every attack on your destiny I decree and declare from tonight by the assignment of angels we ward off that attack in Jesus name whoever has been destined by God to help you rise and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit he has not been able to locate you in the name of Jesus I declare I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you <laughs> believe in every prayer that we're praying we're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity minus you <laughs> I say it again minus you everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family I declare the mystery of exemption over you in the name of Jesus Christ that when men say there is a casting down I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year. I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ any door that was once open and is now closed I reopen it in Jesus name 
I hope you believe everything I'm saying. Please believe it with all your heart. I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. Let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, from that result you will not get anything serious. I change that result now. I change that result now. I change that result now. Believe it, you are too young to walk in unbelief. I change that result now. Anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this never enter it. I say it again. If that vehicle is doomed for accident, then I take you out of it. But in the name of Jesus, if you enter it, then it must not crash. Especially for you, my dear brothers, it takes a lot for a young man to be established. And it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day. In the name of Jesus, the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him. Because you have believed the Lord, I command your establishment now. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.